my hand It's yours to hold I give myself to you Here's my heart Please make it yours I give my love to you We are two Friends and family, we welcome you and we thank you for being here on this important day. Today is a celebration. We are here to celebrate, commemorate, and congratulate the uniting of these two lives together in the miracle of marriage. It's the most profound expression of love, devotion, and commitment known to mankind. It was created by God as his highest, holiest, and happiest hope for a man and a woman. No other human relationship can compare. Just as God in the beginning 
presented Eve to Adam as his complement, his companion, and his friend and partner for life. Who is it that presents Rosemary to Brian? Uh, her mom and I. Okay. Brian, you may now take your bride. Just as God has to be the foundation in our lives for relationships to thrive, I want us to begin in prayer. So would you bow your head with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we've come together to witness the miracle of your love work in the lives of these two people. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit who brings us into a place of union with you and with each other. God, our prayer is that in all we do, in this ceremony, in this marriage, and in this life, that it would glorify you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. You can have a seat if you want. I want to read to you a passage of Scripture that Brian and Rosemary selected. It's out of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 16. Ruth said, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. I love this scripture that you both selected because it speaks to the covenant commitment that you're making today. You know, lots of times we think of marriage as a contract. And in one sense, that's understandable because there's a lot of similarities. I mean, you are entering into an agreement, you both have expectations about the future, and you even sign a paper to formalize it. But the difference is a contract is based upon mutual distrust. We enter into contracts to protect ourselves. I'm only in as far as you're in. A covenant, though, is entirely different. A covenant isn't based on mutual distrust. A covenant is based on mutual commitment. We enter into marriage with the intention to protect the other, not ourselves. We're both in 100% with every part of our being. To be in covenant is to be joined together, and that's what this verse is saying. Your greatest testimony of God's grace will be the way that you determine now to love each other. Don't let anything come between the sacred relationship that God has given you. It's not always going to be easy, but we get insight into how to do this by something Paul wrote in Scripture. He said, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. You see, in marriage, there's going to be lots of times when you fall short of your expectations for each other. That's literally what sin is. It's every time that we miss the mark. That's why I like this expression that Paul uses. He says, be patient, bearing with one another in love. That means that you have to make the conscious decision to demonstrate your love to each other on a daily basis. It doesn't always look inspiring. It doesn't always feel exciting. But the value is what God is producing. His perfect will being manifest in your commitment to prefer what you have together over what you have by yourself. This is God's heart for your marriage. You can see it all throughout scripture. You see it when God instituted marriage at creation. You see it when Jesus honored marriage in the New Testament, and you see it commended by the Holy Spirit in the writings of the Apostle Paul. In fact, when Paul writes about marriage, he talks about how it's a symbol of Christ's relationship with the church, painting a picture for you of the tenderness with which God is looking down on this moment right now. God himself spoke in marriage and said, it's not good that man should be alone, but I will make a helper for him. And later he said, the two shall be one. In other words, what we see in scripture is that part of God's purpose in marriage is that God made you for each other. That means that your life is no longer just your life. It means that your dreams are no longer just your dreams. It means that your hopes are no longer 
just your hopes and that your hearts are now tied to each other. That's what it means to be in covenant. It's a uniting bond that is far deeper than just a promise, contract, or agreement. Just like you were made one with Christ when you placed your faith in him, the same power that joined you to Jesus now joins the two of you together as you pledge your faith to each other. You're not just becoming one in the eyes of the law today. It's so much more powerful than that. You see, marriage isn't just a covenant. It's also a calling. And I want to read to you a scripture that explains what I mean. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This scripture helps us understand that when you think about the greatest thing that God ever instituted for us was salvation through Jesus Christ, it's interesting to note that it wasn't just so that we could be saved. He had a purpose in mind when he did it. Scripture says that it was for works that he prepared in advance for us to do. Because everything God creates, he creates to solve a problem and serve a purpose. This means that God saw a need and he said, I'm going to bring Rosemary and Brian together to solve that problem. That's what a calling is. When we think of this concept of being called, here's what I want to encourage you in. First of all, you're called to each other. That means that you're called to carry each other's burdens. In your marriage, don't try to add to each other's burdens. Carry them. Don't be a burden to each other. Often it's too easy just to be adding strife to the relationship than trying to help one another carry your burdens. But scripture commands us in Galatians 6 to carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. The second thing I want to charge you with is to encourage each other's strengths. I point this out because our tendency is to think I'm called to fix your weaknesses or expose your weaknesses. But that's not how God calls us to serve one another. See, God saw some things in both of you. And he said, Brian, there's some things that I want to do in your life. I want you to become more like Christ. I want you to be strengthened in your faith. And Rosemary is the right girl to develop those things in you. And Rosemary, God looked at you and said, there's some areas in your life that I want to foster and strengthen. I want to grow your strength. I want to build up your faith. I, I want to teach you some new things about what it means to love me. And Brian is the right guy to pull those things out of you. What I want you to see is that God has a purpose in bringing you together. And his purpose isn't merely to make you happy, but to most importantly, make you holy, to make you more like Christ. That's what God wants to do in your marriage. And that's what he will do when you recognize that you're called to each other in covenant and you remain committed to that calling. In many ways, the commitments that we make when we place our faith in Christ, it's a picture of God's plan for us in marriage. I mean, think about how we enter into a relationship with God. We have to decisively and formally open up our heart to him. In the same way, God demonstrates his desire for us to be formally committed to one another. And today, as you have chosen to access God's grace through a commitment in marriage, I want to encourage you that as you put your trust in him, you open the door for greater opportunities, greater potential, greater spiritual growth, and even greater grace. Something holy, something beyond reproach will take place by the Spirit of God inside of you. It's by his design and it's for his purpose. That's the miracle of marriage. Now, Brian and Rosemary, as the two of you come into this marriage, I'm charging you both as you stand here in the presence of God that having considered the holy covenant that you're about to make, that you declare now before this company your pledge of faith, each to the other. Be assured that as these solemn vows are kept and as you endeavor to do the will of God, he will bless your marriage, he will grant you fulfillment in it, and he will establish your home in peace. So Brian, do you take Rosemary as your wife 
to live together in the covenant of, of faith, hope, and love, according to the intention of God for your lives together in Jesus Christ, to stand by her faithfully and love and honor and cherish her as long as you both shall live. I do. And Rosemary, do you take Brian as your husband? to live together in the covenant of faith, hope, and love according to the intention of God for your lives together in Jesus Christ, to stand by him faithfully in love, honor, and cherish him as long as you both shall live. I do. Now, Rosemary and Brian, in a moment, you'll exchange your vows with each other. Not only are these promises meant to be a beautiful and sacred expression of your love for each other, but they are a statement of faith that you are declaring now in the presence of God. So, Brian, you can take Rosemary's hands in yours and say your vows. Oh, man. <laughs> Rosemary, as soon as we began talking, I felt something different something I have never felt before, a sense of attraction that came so naturally as if I was breathing. Throughout our time together, I finally realized this feeling was love. Your personality flows effortlessly with mine, and you always inspire me to continue to grow myself and to grow my relationship with God. You never cease to amaze me, and every day I'm grateful to see you, whether it is to laugh or to cry. You fill me with joy and determination in fulfilling a full life I couldn't imagine anyone else I'd rather be with for the rest of my life. I pray we continue to share all of our feelings together, good or bad, and we continue to grow in our marriage more so. I love you so much, and if I could do it all again, I wouldn't have changed a thing. I vow to keep you close to Christ, to continue to support you in all ways, to put my best foot forward in the relationship, to not hide my feelings with you, to make you laugh three times a day, to continue to show you my culture and learn more about yours, to love your family as if it were mine, and to always remind you of what an amazing person you are. All right, Rosemary, you can now say your vows to Brian. Brian, there are countless things I love about you, but here are a few of them. I love how you make mundane activities like grocery shopping or going to the gym so much fun. I love how you are open to learning about my culture, hobbies, and interests. I love how much you love Christ and how you always strive to have a deeper rela relationship with him. You are everything I've ever wanted and more in a husband. You are my best friend and you know me better than anyone else. You make me better at everything. You make me a better Christ follower, a better friend, a better student, and even a better cook. I vow to be your biggest supporter, to make you laugh every single day, to not take you for granted, to cherish every little thing you do, to love you and your family unconditionally for the rest of my life, and to hold your hand through good times and bad times. I promise to be a loving and devoted wife who walks by your side forever. Te amare por siempre. <laughs> a ring is a very precious thing. It's a symbol of your faith and your love. These rings are made out of precious metal. It's a never-ending circle that indicates a never-ending love. That's what God's love in us enables us to do. It's what causes his power to move in our lives. I want you both to wear these rings as a continual reminder of the covenant commitment that you're making today a continual reminder of the confessions of faith you've made to each other and before God. So Brian, I want you to take this ring and I want you to place it on Rosemary's finger and repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. It's a token and pledge. It's a token and pledge. Of my constant faith. Of my constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Brian, a ring is a symbol, a never-ending sign of love. So wear your ring in remembrance that you belong to one another 
It's a re- reminder of the commitment you've made today. So, Rosemary, as you place this ring on Brian's finger, keep these things in mind. That your vows have stated that you'll both seek to serve and honor one another in the responsibilities of this life, expecting God and his power to always make the difference. So place this ring on Brian's finger and repeat after me. With this ring, I be wed. With this ring, I be wed. It's a token and pledge. It's a token and pledge. Of my constant faith. Of my constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. As you guys prepare to symbolize your marriage with the sand, I want to read a scripture. Out of Ecclesiastes 4, starting in verse 9, it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You can do your sand. It's over there. Ephesians 4, 2 and 3 says this. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient and accept each other with love. Verse 3 says, you are joined together with peace through the Spirit. Do all that you can to continue as you are, letting peace hold you together. Brian and Rosemary, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. You guys can join hands. For as much as Rosemary and Brian have consented together in holy matrimony and have witnessed the same before God in this company, and pledge their faith by joining their hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. I declare by the authority committed to me as a minister of the gospel that this couple is man and wife. What God has joined together, let no one separate. Brian, you may now kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. 
Brian Dominguez and Rosemary Dominguez Lesmana.
everyone. We just want to start off by saying thank you all for coming to celebrate these two wonderful people on a very important date. It's wonderful to see two different cultures from different walks of life coming together as one to witness their union, especially during a very difficult time for a lot of people around the world. Well, Brian, here we are, man. <laughs> this is your big day, and we couldn't be happier for both you and Rosemary. We've been through so much together and have made so many wonderful memories, not only as siblings, but also as the bestest of friends. I still remember that chunky little kid who would always follow his big brother around everywhere and just wanted to experience everything with a friend. I would always slow down to make sure you didn't get left behind and always picked you back up whenever you did fall. I also remember the big brother who would always hold my hand as we would go through the forest, plastic fishing rod in hand as we would walk down to the river to catch some fish, always guiding me, making sure I would never fall. And here we are, together again, making a new memory as you take the next step in your journey. This time it's not just us who are by your side, but you now have a partner who will help guide you in everything that you do. Not just a new partner, but a new family as well, who will love and support you the same way that we do. Rosemary, thank you for coming into Brian's life and blessing him with both true love and happiness. Now, now join, join us, us in raising a glass, glass and, and congratulating the newlyweds. To Brian. To Rosemary. Cheers. Cheers. Hello everyone. We hope everyone is having a great time tonight. For those who don't know us, we are Natalia and Christina. And we met Rosemary through watching superhero movies together and we're so honored to be here today to celebrate her special day. Hola, eh, espero que la estén pasando muy bien todos esta noche. Eh, nosotras, para los que no nos conocen, somos dos de las mejores amigas de Rosemary, eh, Natalia y Cristina. Eh, estamos aquí juntos para celebrar este día tan maravilloso. Eh, nosotros conocimos a Rosemary en bachillerato eh, y nos volvimos amigas por nuestro interés en común en los, las películas de superhéroes. Eh, y eh, esperamos que la pasen muy bien esta noche, eh, celebrando el primer día de esta etapa nueva de Rosemary y Brian. And as we all know, Rosemary is the sweetest, most caring, compassionate person we know. And she was always the one whom we both would turn to at our best and worst moments, because she's the person most ready to celebrate with you, but also the one who's ready to pick you right back up when you fall. She always made us feel understood, heard, and com comforted. And even after high school, as we went to do better and bigger things in college, we always felt like no matter what, we could always count on Rosemary. Eh, Rosemary is one of the personas más eh, cariñosas, amables, y consideradas que nosotras conocemos. Eh, ella siempre está ahí por nosotras en nuestros mejores y peores momentos. Eh, y Ella no es solo la que está lista para celebrar con nosotros en nuestros buenos momentos, pero siempre está ahí para levantarnos cuando, nuestro, cuando nos caemos. Siempre nos ha hecho sentir escuchadas, queridas eh, y valoradas. Eh, y estamos muy felices de estar aquí con ella esta noche. Uh, and we remember so clearly how Rosemary had a list of things she wanted in a guy. And we, everyone thought it was unachievable, but our dear friend Hai Shin introduced Rosemary to Brian. And sure enough, date after date, Brian kept checking off boxes and we were confident that he was, Rosemary finally, finally found someone who was perfect for her. Eh, nos recordamos eh, muy claramente como Rosemary nos había dicho que ella tenía una lista de cosas que ella quería en un chico y que nosotras y ella pensamos que esta lista era inalcanzable. Eh, pero luego de que nuestra amiga Haitian introdujo a Rosemary a Brian, eh, vimos como cita tras cita Brian chequeaba las marcas en su lista eh, y así fue como sabemos que Brian es la persona perfecta para Rosemary. Rosemary loves so deeply, selflessly, and unconditionally, and I know that Brian is the best person for Rosemary because I, we've seen him marry these traits for her, and we're confident that two of you 
will always be able to get through any hardships together with your combined patience, resilience, and love. Um, Rosemary ama profunda, incondicional, y perfectamente. Y sabemos que Ryan es la persona perfecta para ella porque lo hemos visto imitar estos rasgos para Rosemary. Eh, y sabemos que con su amor combinado van a poder superar cualquier dificultad. Also, Ryan has always been there for us too, and he has always been there for Rosemary, and, always, and he will always treat her like the amazing queen she is, or else we'll always be watching you, Ryan. <laughs> Eh, como dijo Cristina, <risa> Brian siempre ha estado ahí para nosotras también eh, desde que lo conocemos hace como cuatro años eh, y sabemos que él siempre va a estar ahí para Rosemary y la tratará como la persona perfecta que ella es eh, si sabe lo que le conviene. <risa> so let's celebrate this amazing couple. We know that because they met, met, they met their lives have, have forever changed for the better. Um, they've developed as better as a couple and as individuals. And we know this because every time little things happen in Rosemary's life, she, the first person she wants to call is Rose, uh, Brian, no matter what, which is super annoying, but really sweet at the same time. <laughs> Entonces celebremos esta eh, maravillosa pareja esta noche. Eh, sabemos que Brian es la persona perfecta para Rosemary porque cual, cuando cualquier cosa pasa en el día de Rosemary, aunque sea muy pequeño, lo primero que ella quiere hacer es llamar a Brian, eh, lo cual es súper fastidioso cuando tratamos de pensar cualquier cantidad de tiempo con Rosemary. Oh, we wish you the very best, and we hope we get to share more amazing moments like this with you guys. And at this point, we were supposed to give a piece of advice, but Rosemary has always been the one wisdom, wisdom to share with us, so we will leave that up to her at our own weddings for some wisdom. Um, and we can only hope we can have a relationship as beautiful as hers. Eh, en este punto del discurso se suponía que teníamos que decir un pedazo de consejo eh, para esta nueva pareja, pero en realidad Rosemary siempre ha sido la que nos da consejos a nosotras eh, y solo podríamos soñar en tener una relación tan perfecta como la de Rosemary y Brian. Rosemary and Brian, we love you 3,000. <laughs> so uh, let's raise a glass now uh, to the happy couple. Cheers to Rosemary and Brian.